Hello everybody and welcome along to Cairn Hill Cabin in County Cavan in Ireland. And uh, my name is Margaret McKenna. Um, I hope you can see me all right. Um, uh, I don't see the, the internet is a little bit uh, coming and going a little bit at the moment, so I hope it's it's okay for you. Uh, if you let me know, just give me a thumbs up and that'd be great. Okay, so today um, I was asked to do um, actually this picture, uh, what was suggested to me because I had done it the other day, and it's basically a picture of a favourite place of mine in the bottom of my garden nearby the fairy tree. And this is the original picture I did here. If you can see it here. And it is a corner of the garden, which is very special, as I say to us, um, right down by the old stone wall. Now, I'm going to put it away because I don't want to copy what I've done before. Um, because at the time I was trying to create the certain atmosphere I caught at that time. And where if I actually copy from my picture, copy of a copy of a picture. So I would prefer to actually do it from, it's freezing there a little bit, so I'm hoping you're getting it okay. Um, if you just let me know there, just give me a thumbs up. That'd be great um, to let me know if you can see it. Um, but basically, uh, you could. I don't like to copy from a picture I've done already because at the time I tried to capture a certain, um, a certain feeling, a certain atmosphere. And if I try then to copy my own picture, it kind of, you kind of lessen that effect. Um, hello, Cecilia, I hope you can see me all right. Um, so my internet, I'm a little bit further from the house. And hello, uh, to Ontario. Oh, that's a nice distance away. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Um, so, um, yeah, so I prefer actually to start again. So in other words, I went down the bottom of the garden and took a whole lot of new pictures and I'm going to work from them as a source. Um, good stuff. Thank you. Um, okay, so a little bit about, um, as I say, Cecilia, there you go. That's what I was doing. If you haven't just tuned in, it's basically based on this picture, but it's going to be, I'm going to work from another picture. You can see it on my Facebook page. You can see the picture roughly that I'm working from. I took a series of photographs. So before I start, um, I just want to tell you a little bit about what I'm, what I'm painting. Um, it's called Under the Fairy Tree. Now, anyone who is uh, not from Ireland, for example, wouldn't may not know about the tradition of fairies in Ireland and or would have heard of sort of leprechauns and they would hear that's the, the, the only what they know about uh, fairies in Ireland. Well, um, fairies in Ireland are not like the fairies you have in first storybooks. They're not the winged creatures like Tinkerbell. They're actually, according to legends, uh, descendant of a race called the Tuatha de Danann, who lived in Ireland many, many thousands of years ago. and um, were defeated in a battle and were doomed to live under the earth and became the fairies. And the fairies are not, as I say, you don't mess the fairies, you uh, respect them. And um, whereby a lot of this is lost now in modern age, still people will be wary. And, and the place I live is a very ancient part of Ireland. It's um, I'm looking across at the old Cairn, which is 5,000 years old. And we have lots of Iron Age forts dotted around the area. And these are often called fairy forts. And in a sense, the fact that rural tradition meant that people did, were afraid of the fairies in years gone by, it meant that these ancient monuments are now kept for us to enjoy, which is fantastic. Uh, a fairy tree is often a white thorn. Um, often known as the May bush because it's coming into blossom now in May. Um, there's a lot of superstitions about about the bush, uh, and at this time of the year, especially because coming into May in Old Ireland, it was this, it was the in it was Bealtaen is the Irish word for May, and it was a time of looking forward to the summer. It was a big festival of Bealtaen in ancient Ireland, um, associated with a place not too far from here called um, Ishnach. And it's the white thorn. If you see it in a field on its own, you don't cut it down. But our white thorn is not on its it's not on its own in the middle of a field. It's right down the corner of our of our wall. But our old wall is really, really, really ancient. Like it's an old boundary wall between two townlands. It's just a stone wall. There's a lot of them around here. So it's it's not special in that regard. But um there's a lot of very old stone walls in this area. And this one is probably would have been one of the older ones because it is a boundary line. And the old uh, fairy tree is an old white thorn is growing through the wall and it's literally embedded in the wall. Part of it's gone and rotten, uh, but all new shoots are coming up all the time. So it's a really special place and there's a lovely atmosphere there. And um, hi, Emer. And so I'm going to paint um, from a picture. Now I'm going to be looking down at my phone every now and again because I have to um, I have to do that because I have my picture on it. Um, 
so if you don't mind me if I do this every now and again, this is the picture I'm actually working from. It's basically the same uh, type of one that I did already the other day. So what I'm using today is I'm using acrylic paints. Um, so I'm, these acrylic paints come and I'm using this. It's mostly Daler uh, System 3 ones I'm using. Some of them like that. Some of them come in the tubes like this. Here we go, like that. And you can and you can get some of the cheaper ones as well, um, like these type of ones here, which wouldn't be strong. Sorry, where you go this way? Um, they wouldn't be as strong a pigment, but they're fine. I often use them as well. So I'm using actually today. I'm I'm actually working on multimedia paper. Um, I'm not working on um. I don't have any acrylic paper, but this paper actually was I did the other picture on it. It was really worked very well. Um, it's good, really thick paper, and because the acrylic is not too watery, it actually worked quite well on it. So to start with, okay, so I'm going to just get a medium sized sort of brush here, kind of flat brush, and I'm going to just mark out roughly what I'm what I'm painting on the picture. So excuse me, I just have to look down my, my phone here for a minute to get my um picture. So okay, so I'm going to mix a little bit of I'm just going to make a, a, a kind of a little bit of yellow and a little bit of green together to start. It's very, very light, just gonna mark it roughly in. It doesn't don't have to be too fussy about this really. Okay, so I'm gonna put a line roughly where I see my horizon line, which is I say you can refer back to my Facebook page and you'll see the um, actual picture I'm doing from, or give or take, there's a few pictures I did in a row, so I think that's the one I'm actually doing it from, but they're all very similar. Okay, so it's about there, and that's the background field. There's a field behind our house, behind our garden slash sort of winter, wilderness sort of area. Um, and okay, so we have, and then we have, a, we have a major big tree coming down here uh, that comes down from next, that's actually in the field behind us like this and it just comes out like that so i'm just roughly marking it in these are quite light because i will actually be going in between these and i'm just going to pick up my phone here for a minute i don't have a printer then i don't have um access to do a really good print i prefer to do it on the light and this is actually better than on the um than on a printer because sometimes the printer doesn't really give you the proper um colors unless you've got a really Good quality printer. So I'm marking in just the road. There's a big stone in our back field, or behind our, or not our field, but in the field behind us. And I do believe that I wonder often is it belonging to some ancient monument that's been taken apart because some of them were in the area. So old cairns uh, were taken apart a long, 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 long time ago. Um, and I wouldn't be a bit surprised. And now we have this old area here of a stone wall. You can see what I'm copying from here. But as you say, you can look back at my. Um, so I'm really just very, very lightly just put it all in like this so I'm just getting the overall atmosphere I'm not even putting in the fairy tree that's part of the fairy tree in here but I'm not going to bother with it and there's bushes and trees in the back field out here like that like that and it comes in behind here this is how rough I do it so really I'm just really just roughing in the trees the the bushes behind and there's a, some more bushes up here but I'm not going into town on them at all now just a little bit there like that okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to start to paint now at this stage that's how rough i'll really do it in to start with um and start with i'm going to see my brush here i'm going to get my i'm going to use a powder blue actually i got it's a lovely i like this shade and just because i always try to find an excuse to use it really um it's a really pale blue and i'm going to put a bit of white with that and i'm going to put this in for the sky because it's a very you can use now if you don't have a powder blue i could use a, a bit of ultramarine with a load of white in it because it's a very pale sky so it's just barely it was kind of evening time and i'm going to use the paste of paint nice and thick on it like this and i'm just literally going to you won't see an awful lot of the sky now to be honest i'm going to work this really nice and quick strokes it's almost like you're trying to capture the atmosphere you're not trying to um, and as i did with the other one I didn't um I didn't try to dwell on an area. I was kind of like trying to kind of get that feeling that I had at the time, as it were. And that's really what to me what a painting is about. Well, certainly the type of painting that I like to do. Um I'm not one sometimes this time it's not it's almost like a, a sketchy kind of a kind of get that atmosphere, capture it down quickly. This was quite pre um what would you call it? Um impressionist is the word i'm looking for so we're going to just bring up here like that and forget remember you can always look back on these on facebook afterwards and you can look back on um youtube as well i'll put them up on youtube later on so if there's anyone you know who does it on facebook they can tune in i'll do it this evening i'll put it up so i'm just darkening it a little bit on the top a little bit of a little more of the blue not exactly darkening but 
little more of the blue in here. So that's really, that's really all. You're not going to see too much of the sky anyhow. So I'm going to just clean my brush a little bit so I don't want to have too much blue in it. Okay. Now I'm going to go back in and start to do the, um, the, 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 the actual trees in the background. But it's going to be very, very light color because it's a really sunny evening. So I'm going to mix a nice lot of light. This is a yellow. Like it's, I think it's a process yellow I'm using. You could use a cadmium yellow. would be quite a nice color. And a little bit of a little bit of green. If you have any questions at all, please ask me now. I might not see them now. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, if you do want to leave them, and I'll definitely get to see, I'll see them later on when I finish the live stream. So I'll ask you, I'll answer your questions if you have any. So, okay, so a little bit of my yellow and my, and I'm going to start dabbing this in here like this. Often I squint my eyes at other pictures. I know I always say this in classes when I'm teaching them because it kind of helps me to kind of get the overall idea of it. So I'm just going to, and this is just a very rough, I'm just getting overall, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get overall my colors in on the picture. I don't care if I go in on top of my tree at the moment. I'm not fussy. That doesn't bother me at all. Often I lay down the general color first and come back in and 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 work on it then because actually it makes you get an overall feeling rather than, if you, and I've said this before millions of times, if you try and do too much detail at one time, you can um, get caught up in it and then it actually doesn't sometimes fit in with the overall uh, picture. So I'm going to go in for the, um, as I say, I'm looking, don't mind me looking down here at my picture every now and again. The phone keeps going off me, which is a bit annoying. So I'm going to add a bit of white into this now, just for the for the, for the the field. The field is really sunny here. So I'm going to get a nice white into my yellow and my green. I'm going to bring that across like that. And across over here like this as well. I'm going to put a shadow on this in a while. So don't worry, this is, this is not the finished article, as it were. It's... We're going to get through it like that, okay? So I'm just literally blocking in the overall areas first, and we'll come back to it then. Okay, so we've got our walls. Now, this area is quite a dark kind of an area, so I'm going to mix a bit. How I get a grayishy color, I'm going to mix a bit of my burnt burnt umber and a bit of my um, ultramarine and a bit of white in together. So I'm going to get a grayishy kind of a shade. But I'm going to add little bits of burnt sienna into it. So it's really kind of a kind of a mishmash of colors, as it were, through it. I'm just going to grab it in and out through here. I'm going to add bits of my sap green in on top of that. So this is going to be a real, uh, you know, a little, a literally a mishmash of color. That's all I can say, really. A mishmash of different colors. So when the really dark parts, I'll come in with the really, the blue and the, um, Ultramarine and burnt, uh, burnt umber. I don't really use blacks. I use the really dark shades instead uh, and make up a really dark blacky kind of a color instead. So don't mind me say looking down here. And I'm going to even add, uh, that's my, I have yellow ochre here. I have, as I say, burnt, um, sorry, burnt umber, burnt sienna. That's, I won't use the Naples yellow just yet. And, and yellow ochre. So I'm kind of dipping almost, if you can imagine dipping in even a bits of green into it too, although I will put more green shortly into it as well. So you get a real mishmash of shades going on in here and a bit more green actually up in this corner and, a bit, and even yellow into it. So we're kind of getting a real, it's kind of a real mishmash of colors. It's all I can describe it as mishmash. You can invent words when you're doing these things, you know, as you go along, just sort of make up your own words, kind of describes how you feel at the time, mishmash. Okay, here we go. So this is kind of how I'm blending it in and just getting that overall. Now there's a little more green on the top of the wall here. So I'm going to mix a bit of my um, sap green, a little bit of burnt umber into it and a little bit of yellow ochre into it to kind of give it a slightly mossier kind of feeling to it. I'm leaving out that bit for just a minute. Come back to it in a, cent, in a minute. Um, just let me see where we're going here. Bring this down a bit more. I'm going to bring some of my dark shades back into here as well. Quite a lot of dark shades at the bottom. So, yeah, the fairy tree, it's quite an interesting concept, that idea of, um, of a fairy tree. I know my, um, I had a cousin who works a folklorist in Dublin. She worked in the college, unfortunately she passed away. And she would have been, she would have been a, I suppose an authority in a sense in a lot of this because she would have gathered the stories from Ireland and different places and and she would she would have been very much brought up in the city in that so she wouldn't have been you know a country person with the well I suppose she would have certain known from her granny in that 
But I often asked her, I asked her before, well, the, with the fairy tree, the bottom of the garden, I said, well, would you consider that a fairy tree? And she said, actually, yes, I would, because it's where it is. It's in a boundary wall. It's in a special place. And I said, would you cut that down? And I, she said, no, I wouldn't. And I said to her, well, why do you really believe that? And she said, let's put it this way, she said. I've heard enough stories and I've read enough to know not to do it. And that's all she said. And I'm leaving it there. That was our attitude. So interesting. So getting back to the picture, we're going to put a little bit of a grey wall. So I'm going to go back to my nice pale bluey colour here, a bit of white, a little bit, a touch of brown. And I might add in this lovely colour that I got, which is called Buff Titanium. And it's a really nice colour. It's kind of a bit of a mix. It's a bit like a white mixed with bits of browns in it, but it's great for doing kind of stony kind of colours. But you can make it with a bit of white mixed with your blue and your um your brown. So a bit of your ultramarine, your um burnt umber and white. And sometimes I can add in a bit of yellow ochre and it gives those kind of nicer, kind of warmer shades into it. So this is the big rocks that I have in the garden here behind, or not in the garden, they're next door actually, in the field behind us. And then we have our, our ground here. So our ground again is lots of different shades of, it's basically old leaves. So I'm going to put in shades of uh, burnt sienna and I'm dabbing it in here, just dabbing it like this, dabbing it with burnt sienna, um, bits of yellow ochre and um, bits of uh, burnt umber. So they're all a lot of brownie shades, but I'm trying to vary some kind of di different shades on my brush at the same time. And, and I'm really kind of making it little, very quite dotty almost because I want to get that whole feeling of um, underfoot that the, the leaves are there. Make me see that now. It's just going down a bit here. I better put that down a bit. Sorry. So you can see the whole thing there. Okay, there we go. I can work to the top later on. So basically just filling this the floor of the of the of the area as it were. It's just underneath the there's a horse chestnut here as well. So I'll be putting those leaves in later on. So you can see I'm really mixing the you can see the way I'm just literally dabbing in a lot of different shades onto the ground um, in the brownie uh, sin um spectrum as it were. And even a little bit of the blues in it too, because the blue gives it that depth of colour. Is it the, the depth of darkness beneath? So here we go. So, okay, so I'm going to leave that kind of like that for now. And I'm going to get start, just going to mark in the tree. And again, this is very roughly done because remember, I'll be coming back to that tree, um, I'll be coming back to the background first before I go near the tree. So sorry, I have to look down here again to see where I'm going with this. Okay, so. On my tree, I'm going to get a, a, a bit of our yellow ochre and I'm going to put a bit of white with that. Nice set of white. And yeah, there we go. And I'm going to bring it. I'm not going to bother with the other trees yet. Or the, I'm not actually used to doing the fairy tree even yet at the moment. This is a big tree in the background. So I'm going to go into the lighter shades first. So I'm just going to bring it down like that. This is literally just marking it in more or less. Okay, like that. And we're going to have the long one coming down here like this. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to doing the, the background. Okay, so here we go. Now, I'm going to start to do the uh, the background of the trees now again in the background. So we've got some darker areas. If you look in the these trees here, they're not all light, even though they are mainly quite light. So I'm going to come back in with my sap green and I'm going to add a little bit of my burnt sienna into or not my burnt umber, I should say, into that. So I'm making it a darker green and I'm going to start dabbing in with the areas that I see that are darker. So I do see, is I often go backwards and forwards on a picture. I might use a different brush, actually. Sometimes I get very lazy and I just have the same brush in my hand and then I'm realizing why is it so hard to, you know, just don't take it out of my hand. I have a nice little brush there and I don't even use it. Then I just realize, oh, God, just use the right brush. It's life easier, isn't it? Okay, so a bit of browns. This is the brown and a burnt umber and a bit of um, sap green. So I'm just going to bring that in and out through so I'm just checking on the picture again don't mind me here 
just making sure that I can see what I'm doing here. Yeah, it's a little bit coming in there through here. So there we go, like that. It's funny, you really observe now the fact that we're sort of so stuck at home at the moment. And, you know, it's a great time to, you know, I suppose when we're lucky, and I do really appreciate where I live now in that regard. And I'm, you know, because, you know, I am, I'm lucky. I can't help saying that, like, because it's hard if you're if you're stuck inside all the time. At least here, the, you know, it's just, a little, it's just a wilderness, really. It's nothing fancy, but it just means you can get out in the air and and, 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 and breathe. And, but you can appreciate nature so much better too. You have the time to do it, which is one of the good things about this time, because there's a lot that isn't good about it. Okay, so I'm gonna go a bit of, keep going down here with my brown and my green together, and I'm just working in the, some of the shadowed areas that I'm seeing here. Don't even shadow it. The little so I'm gonna just bring it out and I can start working little dots of it out here like this. So I'm working little tip tip tips out into the into the sky as it were so we're starting to kind of actually build it out as it as, as a bush trees whatever it is it's kind of a mixture of trees and shrubs they're kind of going in a line up the hill there's a hill behind us this area here is kind of like a hill and it goes right up the um goes right up the hill there so i'm just going to bring that Now, see the way I'm bringing them out like this. We'll be going back over with lighter ones again. So I work backwards and forwards. I kind of work, work them all in sort of as a, um, just as a, 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 a kind of general, in general color first, and then I come back in and work on them. So that I can't, don't have, I'm not working with big blank areas of, on the page. I like to kind of get a color on the page. The other thing I want to do is I want to put a few of the trees in the back, because there, are, there is a kind of a row of trees on the very back. I'll do that now in a second. So I'm going to bring this in and out. I'm using say this, so this is the brown and um this is burnt sienna or sorry burnt umber and um sap green. If you have a viridian viridian green can quite a bluey hue on it. Um, if you do have that, what I would do is I'd add a bit maybe of yellow ochre into it or even a bit of the browns. I might bring the thing up back up again a bit so you can see a bit better there. Just get the angle right. Um, okay, so I'm going to just... Not like that. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little few bushes across the back. So I'm going to start with the base. While I have the same colour... This is on the very horizon line like this. And this is the brown again and the green. I'm just going to drag it along and up and down like that. Sort of like it's the trees on the very distant um, sort of far side of the field, basically. So I'm going to bring it across here as well like that. And you can do this quite, you can sort of do a line at the bottom. And then up and down a little bit like this, kind of like, oh, like irregular shaped kind of, because really it's 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 um, I say they're going to be the trees. So get it like that. And let me see. So I just go back to my picture here for a second. Um, say so I have it on my phone. If anybody's just joined, so I have to kind of go fair backwards and forwards. It's a bit of a nuisance. Okay, so we have another bush down here. Okay. So I'm just going to bring a few of these down here as well. Now, I'm going to come back with a bit more of my yellow into my green, greeny kind of shade here, my greeny brownie shade. It's a bit more yellow into it. And I'm going to start dabbing the just a little lighter, especially on the lights coming from the left here. It's the, the um, so it sets in the west. The west is over this side. So I'm just going to, and the same over here. Now I might even bring some of these more. Oh, that's a bit too tight. Put in the wrong place, of course. Put the dark instead of the lighter one. So we'll bring these top these and make it even lighter again. 
little tips of yellow even out like that. Huh? See little tips of yellow? And just that just like as if the light's just catching it in places. Now and I might even go down with sometimes I don't actually wash the brush, I just tap it dry. So I'm just gonna get it a bit of my brown and my blue together, a very dark shade here. And I'm just take it down. I'm just gonna cup a little bit bottom near the bottom of it. You just underneath here as if there's a real shadow just underneath the base of these trees. Like that there. Now, what I want to do next is I'm going to just uh, just go over the um, the line. So we had for our for our grass we had our white, we had our yellow and our green, and I'm going to and to put that again. I'm just going to bring it across, just to edge that grass as it were there, and the same on this side, like that. Okay. Now. There's a nice little shadow going into the background. Now we're not finished with the trees yet, but I just want to go onto the grass for a moment. There's a shadowed area here because the, 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 the tree is casting a shadow. So I'm going to add a bit more of my green kind of shade and I'm going to just add a little bit of yellow, sorry, a bit more yellow in. I'm just going to drag that out into the, I'm going to put my yellow ochre into that. Yellow ochre is a good color. It's a very calming color. It kind of calms your greens down, makes it look sort of, Gives it almost a grassy, mossy shade. So I'm going to drag out the shades like that across the ground like that. So it's like that. This is the shadows coming across the ground, across into the field. And we can kind of get a rough idea of which the direction of them. They're kind of coming at a sort of an angle over that direction. So sort of kind of the sun is over, just sort of over here to the left, but slightly forward to the left so we're getting it now great now I'm going to come and not finish those trees yet because those trees I'm going to add I'm going to go back to my yellowy greeny shades and I'm going to actually start tipping in and out extra little shades throughout this so I'm getting my yellow and green together and I'm using cat well I'm, I'm using a process yellow but a cadmium yellow would be quite nice and I'm putting um sap green but I'm making it quite yellowy quite a yellowy shade and I'm going to just tip this in and out and we can kind of edge the bushes now a little bit we kind of give that little little tips as if the, the you know the, the it doesn't all it's not smooth. The leaves are kind of coming off into them, out and branching out on themselves. You don't see every little tiny branch, you, and you're kind of going to come in again on top of our dark areas. So remember, I do these really dark areas. So I'm going to tap little tip, tip, tips. And I'm using the brush, I'm using it very thick paint on, but I don't plow it into it. I barely tip it. It's often I know, notice how I hold the brush. I'm holding the brush really high up. You don't hold it down like that. I always hold it really high up because it gives it actually a lot more. Um, control even though you might think it won't the higher you hold the brush you actually get, you get a much softer touch and i'm not worried if i'm going into my tree do you notice i'm not allowing my it to invade my tree as it were because i don't want a case and i often say this in classes where, where there's often kind of what i call the halo effect where you try and avoid something and you leave a big gap beside it so don't do that don't be afraid if you if you tip on top of the tree because we'll be going on top of the tree anyway later on so don't worry about that so i'm going to bring in this is yellow and green together uh cadmium yellow process yellow and a bit of sap whichever it is sap green and i'm tipping it along little tiny little tip tip tips and i'm sort of building this up so it's starting to get like the little bits going off and doing their own little thing oh, little bits in And then we're going to come in on top of this. A few little bits here because the, the, the shadows are in between in the dark areas. But there's light on top. A few little tips in there we'll put in. A few little tips just here like that. A 
Now I'm going to add a few little darker ones here. I'm going to add a bit more green in here, a bit more of my burnt or my my uh, sap green. I'm just going to add a little bit more. Add a little tiny bit of where's my burnt umber, which is a brown color, into it. Yeah, it's quite a nice shade of brown, burnt umber. It's quite a, a good shade. I'm just going to add a little more down here to make this a little more shadowed more of the light coming in. I'm going to go down and talk for now because I don't want to have the rock too. Don't worry about the rock. We'll catch the rock now in a minute when we do it. So I'll come back with a little bit of the light on top of that. So the yellowy green again. So I'm just going to bring it in and out here. And the same over here a bit. So this is the yellow and green. It's basically the same. I added the white in the background because it was very kind of white. white. The, the grass is very, very light shaded in the background. Now I'm going to work a little bit on my rock here. So this rock here is like a big boulder, really. Huge boulder that's in the back field. Which is always why I wonder was there an old cairn or something that it was... Now, actually, you know what I'm going to add? A little bit of a mauve shade into this, a little purpley shade into it, because I can kind of see a kind of flicker of that kind of colour in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a slightly bigger brush. Where's my other brush? This one might be good. Okay, just a little bit bigger. And I'm going to add, I'm going to make a little bit of a purple, and I'm going to put a bit of white into it, and I'm going to put a little bit of brown into it. But I'm going to a little bit of the blue. I'm going to make it fairly dark in parts of it. So I'm going to make a bluey, purpley kind of a with a bit of white into it. And I'm going to start flicking on the. Oops, it's gone off me there. I'm going to add a bit more white in there. And I like to use my paints fairly thick. goes down somewhere like that, like that. And there is a reflected kind of light, which is interesting. So I'm going to come back in with my powder blue and drag that along the edges. And even though the light's coming from this side, sometimes you get what's called reflected light. It's like a back light from, from something that's reflecting the light back on top of the, on top of the, the subject. I'm going to add some of this powder blue. Powder blue is a lovely kind of a shade. Um, I have to admit, I do like it. Now, um, I'm going to add a bit more brown. My, uh, my, um, sorry, just going out of here for a second to get my bit more my burnt umber here. Just running out of there. So I want to get a really dark shades in place. So I'm going to go in with my my ultramarine and my and my um, burnt umber. And I'm going to get a nice dark, dark shade here. And I'm going to drag it in around in here like that, in by the tree. And sometimes you use the brush, I'm using it very, very lightly now, just kind of barely tipping it along the surface here. Adding lighter bits of with the with the with the um, powder blue and white just on top here, and I'm barely touching. Often it's about the touch of the, the brush more than nearly the colour you put on it. That's this is important. To be honest, it's really 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 pale, pale light colours, really light, really very light touch. And I've said this before in my last live stream, and I always say it because it's something that's been handed down to me. The phrase whisper it as my, as my phrase my mother was an artist and she used to always say whisper it along and as i say for a long time i couldn't understand what that meant but it means just barely tip it there is whisper it. you always say it in a whisper when you say it it's like because it makes you feel like you want to do it so i'm adding more it's literally white now a little bit of powder blue you add a bit of ultramarine with white in it just little bits of white really it's very pale whitey blue there's little tiny bits of mauve going through here it's just literally very, very light. And I'm just building up that kind of 
slightly you can see sort of rocky kind of sense to it and i make the like make the, make it nice and thick on the brush and when you have a, when you have a hard edge like that you can sort of wipe your brush and you can just smudge it back in just slightly like that smudge it back in now what i want to get is i'm going to add on a little bit we're going to start working a bit on our tree now we've done a light color on the tree i'm now going to come back and do quite a dark shade initially on this tree on the other side we lighten it i'm going to start the darker side on the right hand side which is the side against the shadow so i'm going to come back in again with the color very similar to what i've used there which is um if you don't have notice i noticed something in there which is quite important here um let me see there's a little sliver of light i notice in the picture i'm doing and i it's coming in here and actually i want to put it in because it could be white so when i say light it's the light green it's basically a bit of light coming back from the tree behind see there and i think that's going to be quite relevant see that tiny little space it's funny little tiny things are often really important in a picture really important and you don't realize it until um until later on until, until when you when you're finished it somebody's think oh my god that really worked that little tiny bit that if i didn't put that in somebody's do it by accident nearly okay so we're going to go for the really dark so i'm going to go in for my brown and my blue and i'm going to be quite dramatic here i'm just going to go straight down like that which i know it's quite daring to do kind of fun too i have to admit well because you just kind of go in like that you know you don't really care you just kind of go in like that okay you don't have to have the sound effects but you want you can okay there you go like that like that that and i'm just working out where these go okay oh my picture's gone okay bring it down like that and like that okay and then we're going to come back up this side we will put a little more shadow in here and then i'm going to go up here and here and i'm going to just i'm going to bring it across like that okay now so that looks quite bold if that's the word so now we're going to add a bit more white to that so i'm going to add my brown my white a bit of um by my what you call it my ultramarine and i might add a little bit of um, yellow ochre into that too kind of a bit of a mishmashy kind of a shade okay i'm going to kind of go down in between these like that so we're going to kind of get a, a line in between. I know I'm kind of wiggling a little bit. And again, the same here. Okay, right. Now, I'm going to actually take off the colors off the brush right now. So I'm going to dry my brush nice and dry. Okay, so keep it together dry. There's nothing on my brush now. So I'm going to start now. I'm wa 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 wiggling, wiggling, wiggling this brush very along. Very and keep drying it because each time you, if you don't dry it off it'll just keep t it'll actually repaint itself you know what I mean? because there's so much paint on the brush so watch this i'm just going to wiggle it along like that and i'll go down and wiggle it along like this one just a very do the same here there's not as much on the side might have to go back on that dark one again a bit more so I might, I might have gone a bit too far over the greys. Okay, and then I'm going to go a bit more on this side. Just sort of get smudged that area. Get a nice smudginess. And I'm going to work across, so I'm going to smudge the grey then into this. So I'm going to, it's just a general smudging of the area. Now, of course, acrylic dries very fast. That's the disadvantage of of acrylic. Oils can be quite easy because you can, um, you can play around with this for ages. Play around with it the next day, two days later, maybe a week later. You know, you can, depending on the atmosphere you have it in. Um, but I vary it. I'm basically using a dry brush here, really. And I'm going to smudge it up here like that. And the reason I'm kind of going forwards and back like that rather than straight up and down is because the tree has that kind of rounded effect and it has that um, 
you, you know you can see that the round it, it kind of goes that way rather than up and down some trees are much more up and down right like ash trees um i think this is sycamore i think yeah if you have you go ash trees they're more and um, the older trees are inclined to have that kind of rivets kind of to go up and down the tree okay so what i'm going to do now is going to come back with the lighter one now so i'm going to use a little bit of naples yellow actually and naples yellow is a lovely color if you don't have naples yellow i'm going to put some white into that if you don't have naples yellow you can actually mix it with um give or take it's quite very similar to it is a bit of say something like a yellow like a um, cadmium yellow a white and add a little bit of yellow ochre into it so it ends up kind of creamy it's like a creamy yellow color so i'm going to add a bit more white into this yellow ochre like this and i'm going to bring it down this side here and i'm going to go right on the very edge outside and notice that watch how i'm twiddling the brush you see how i'm doing this the brush look see i'm turning the brush so i use it i turn the brush going along like that and i'm keeping it on the outside so i'm getting a very definite line along that side there so get up there now yeah just like that and then i'm going to come back here with this side as well up and twirl the brush you get some more you get more paint off the brush when you twirl it and you can get nice little edges as well nice little kind of edges of white on or light color or whatever the color is you have okay i'm going to do the same again i'm going to um to take that off the brush and i'm just going to soften i'm going to start smudging these colors back in a, a very dry brush effect so we're going to get a Get that color back in here. So we're getting that. So we get that rounded feeling. Get the kind of feeling of a rounded feeling on the tree, like that. You can start to pat now. This is where you can start to. I will just do this first. First, we can start to kind of put little details almost on the tree. So you can come up with little bits that are. There are some parts that are very just very dark bits. So we can get our go back to our browns and our blues again, which would be our burnt um, umber and our um, um, ultramarine. And we can just darken in. Oh, sorry, a bit of the light get on that one. Bit of my powder blue invaded that there. And we can patch a few little few little dings as it were in the tree you know these patch darker areas it gives it a little surface on it and also a very good idea if you're painting and if you get fed up painting you think oh my god it's not going anywhere this is a disaster please walk away always walk away from a picture it's amazing when you come back to a picture after a time it can look completely different like fresh eyes are so important on a picture so i'm just going to bring this a few little dings along in here so you can get that kind of feeling of the, the surface of the tree i'll put this picture up anyway as i do with this actual this actual one um on on my page later on so you can have a look at it up properly so I'll be able to see it better than on the, the screen. So I'm using my blue and my brown here like that. And you can work it through. And I'm putting little extra dark bits in places like up here. Just up above the, 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 the bend of the tree. Oh, that's a bit too light there. Come in with that darkish bit in there. But you know what's quite nice is get a little bit of reflected light. And if you get a small little brush, actually a little tiny brush, where's my little small one now? Ah, here it is, okay. I get a very pale blue often. 
So I'm going to use the, my powder blue and a little bit of white. And I'm just going to go on the very far side. I'm just going to put a little, little light bit. coming down here and it just gives it that like a reflected light a bit like you have in the rocks it gives that nice kind of a 3d kind of effect to it okay so i'm going to work down a little bit more on my um on my wall area here so we're going to work on this this side over here i'm not going to do anything with it with it with too much about that well i will be putting in the um our, our fairy tree very shortly it's beginning our old stump bit of our fairy tree i should say but just before it, i'm going to just work on this area here so i'm going to this we have a kind of a rock kind of a thing first of all there's lots of rocks here it's all rocks actually this area is called carrick and carrick means rock and when you try to dig a hole in the ground you'd know all about it i can assure you it is full of them i had to dig last year when i was doing foundations for this cabin i'm in and or for the area outside it and it was it was exactly fun now i have to admit okay now we're going to get some the brown which is our um our, what you call it, our, 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 our ultramarine and our, our burnt umber and i'm going to mix the two of them together and i'm going to get a really dark bit in this corner this corner is very dark and i'm going to bring it out with i just want to get that really as dark as i can So we're going to bring that this area. There's a big sort of a rock business going on here, and it's quite it's quite dark. And there's a, a few dark bits coming through here and up here. Because it's really rocks and there's lots of moss and there's little bits of grass and it's frozen there. Is it okay? Okay, I think it's freezing a bit there. I hope it's okay now internet i'm a little bit away from the house here so sometimes it goes comes and goes so i'm going to put a bit of my green and yellow and a little bit of my yellow ochre and the reason is because that will actually give it a kind of mossiness here now the sunlight is shining on this so this is really nice actually here there's going to be a really nice bit here coming down just keep that an eye on that and then i'm going to bring and the nice bit coming around the side of this rock this is actually a big flat rock here but it's totally in shadow you don't really see, you can't really see it because of this, the, as I say, it's kind of evening sun. And we've been so lucky that today now is a bit of a change in our weather here in Ireland. Um, but I must say the last few weeks of, and funny enough, since we went amazing for this time because we're not renowned for our good weather in this country, as anyone who lives here would tell you. It's the one disadvantage we have is our weather. When it's nice, it, you could not wish for a nicer place to live. But unfortunately, when it's rotten, it can be rotten. Not that cold, but rain and windy and wet and dark. But we've been so lucky lately, so lucky. Um, and it's been it's been just brilliant. And when it's nice, I say it's nice. Now, I'm just bringing this, as I say, this is green, um, yellow, and a little bit of yellow ochre, which is that kind of slightly mustardy shade for people who don't know my because it's a, not a color you'd learn as where in under normal circumstances yellow ochre so often you might need to know exactly what it is um but that's what it is it's a kind of a mustardy shade like a french mustard shade almost so i'm dragging these little bits of kind of mossy um i suppose you'd call it mossy kind of grassy god knows everything in it really it's just a, just a bit of a wilderness here now I'm going to add nice bits of our burnt sienna in here as well. Now burnt sienna with my burnt sienna is quite a reddishy brown, and I'm going to put that in a bit with my with my burnt umber, the other shade. And I'm just going to tap some of this a bit more brown into it, little bit reddish. But there is nice reddishy bits. Oh, sorry, I got into the white there as well. That often happens too. You need to plunge into something doesn't matter. Just bring little bits in there, and I'm going to come back with my little bits of my blue in there as well, and even bits of my purple. Just give a nice little depth of shades to it. And I'm tapping this in and out because it's, it's very rough ground. It's it's old leaves, it's as I say, it's bits of everything. Sticks, um, and God knows if, if you find some 
ties that the kids had when they were whatever age they were stuck down under came across a few an old car once and i came across a little tiny little toy car came across a little teapot not just just up further up the garden a bit under stuff god knows what you discover no major archaeological stuff i'm afraid just kind of from when they were younger now little bits of here we're going into our burnt sienna and I'm just going to drag a little bit of that burnt sienna into that rock and just show just very slightly just edge that take that edge off that green so it's a very dry brush a lot of the time I use a very dry brush I don't have an awful lot of um there's no water on it it's it's very 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 pale uh, very pale so it's very very light uh, amount of uh, of uh, water and it's just literally a dry brush and you're nearly work on the page into another color so i'm just literally tapping in and out so just working these colors in and out between each other just to give it that effect and you can even add little nicer lighter greeny bits add a bit more yellowy bits in places like there's a yellow bit coming up on that tree actually sorry yellow a greeny bit coming up on that tree here too a mossy bit and it's just coming up and it's catching the sunlight and so i'm going to go in as daring with a quite a bright yellowy bit here just tipping it along again look at how light i'm using my brush holding it really far back and barely tipping i think if you hold it very close it's inclined to stab and you don't want that it's almost like a little a sewing needle going up and down almost this feeling you know and little taps of light, just catching that light. Look, see, catching it. So you want to think about what you're trying to capture in a picture. Don't think, if you think about what you're doing, think about what is I like about this place? What is it I want to feel about this place? And then you're kind of on, you know, you know you're, you're on the home run in a sense, like, you know, because then you kind of, it, it, often if you get, I think you can get um, caught up in a detail, I think of the overall thing. So, okay, I'm going to start by old fairy tree now. So I'm going to put in, again, I'm going to use my brown and my blue, which is my uh, ultramarine and my um, burnt umber. And I'm going to go in quite dark. This is the really old part of the tree. And it's kind of, it's actually dead, this bit of the tree, but it's a really old bent bit. And it's really, And it just comes in like that. And I'm going to use a little bit of a smaller brush now just to kind of get the smaller branches on it. Just kind of keep an eye. So I have to keep looking at my phone every now and again because I have the picture on my phone and it goes off on me every so often, which is a bit annoying. Okay, so I've got one bit here and we've got a piece coming up. And it's quite dark because it's actually in the shadow, this bit. Which is nice because it actually makes it, it means that it contrasts nicely with the background. And there's really tiny bits, there's a spiky bit going up here like that. I say it's really all, and there's another bits of it all coming down in all sorts of directions here. Again, I'm twirling the brush in my hand, if you notice. It helps you to get the paint off it. So I might bring this, yeah, that's fine, yeah. Okay, and we've got... I've got another piece of it coming up. Okay, I'm going to get a slightly bigger brush here because there's a long piece of it coming up. So I'm just checking where I'm going here with this. Okay, so I've got a big long piece coming down like this. And it kind of comes down. I'll put the light on it in a minute. There's another branch of it coming off. There's millions of branches on this, actually. But I'm not going to do every single one. You'll be here all day. But I'm going to do, get the basic structure of it, as it were. See, now that I've got the tree underneath, it means that I don't mind. I'm going to go back a slightly smaller run here. It doesn't matter if, um, it doesn't matter. You go on top of it now, you see. I'm going to bring this up a little higher so that it overlaps with it. And we're going to just, there's loads of bits coming off here. This one kind of has. So 
So I'm going to have lots and lots of pieces of this. Actually, this actually comes across and it actually comes from that tree. It's a really weird shape because they often about the hawthorn. They're very odd. They're they're really they're like they're the really sharp kind of cornered, you know, branches that crooked and bent and kind of almost like hands. You know, they're really they're strange shapes. They're quite spiky too, but you don't mess with them. As I say, you respect them. If they're like these ones. I mean, lots of farmers grow them as, as borders for um for for um fields as well. But these are not the ones that are planted. These are the ones growing naturally, and they're really um I say they they're in the wilder places, as they say, or sometimes just in the sitting in the middle of the field, all on their own. And one coming across over here like this more water on the brush just gone a bit too dry now even though I like it dry sometimes you have to put a little bit of water otherwise it kind of just gets too uh... so I've got bits coming up oops, oops my thing gone off me got lots of millions of these branches they're coming everywhere and they're they can go up off the bread off the tree off the trees off the page okay I will get one okay like that and this is one here and it's going off like this but it's got lots of branches coming off it too I say this is a dead tree, so it's kind of got it's kind of got lots of little bits coming off it and it's got now I'm gonna put a little bit of light down the side of this now. So going back to my light, my white, the little bit of my powder blue in it, but you could use a pale blue, a little bit of brown through it. So I get a kind of a light grey shade of bright like grey brown shade. And I'm just going to put a bit, little bit down the side of this here. The side of this one too. But I'm going to hit and miss a little bit in this one. Just putting a little bit of light here in places. It gives it a little bit of three dimension. I'm going to a little bit of light in this here, just a tiny bit. I'm going to take that off and I'm just going to dry that. Use a dry brush just to really dry brush. Just to smudge that in slightly. Just like that. Let's go back with a little bit here. Now, so don't be afraid when you're painting. Ever be afraid, as I say. Go away, come back. If you don't be happy with it, walk away. Make yourself a cup of tea. Come back, have a look at it again. It really is important to do that because often when you look at something, um, you can't see the wood for the trees. Literally. Um, now there's another bit of a one over here at the side here as well, but I'm going to work on this wall a little bit here first. So um, let me see where we're we going with this wall here. Okay, so we've got again, it's very similar. We've got nice little bits of our green, our green and yellowy colours here with a little bit of our brown in it, a bit of our yellow ochre into it. Um, and it's kind of to, to build up our mossy kind of a wall here. Because we've got lots of oh I have to put a load up, do you know what I did now? I'm after putting paint on my phone. There we go. So I couldn't actually see what I was doing. I thought it'd be no, there we go. Now that's the problem with trying to do things from your phone. You get with painty hands. Not great. Okay, so I'm gonna just build bits of the light of catching these catching the, the moss here at the front here. And I'll come back with a bit of shadows too, because I want to get the 
some of these shadows in as well. There's a lovely bit of light wall here, which I'm just looking at, which is really nice. And it's almost like a Naples yellow. As I remember, I told you earlier on, if you haven't got a Naples yellow, you can make it with um, white and a yellow, like a cadmium yellow or process yellow I'm using, and some yellow ochre. And it's just catching, it's like a stone that's catching the light. The sunlight, that's the evening sun. So just leave it like that for a minute. Let's move a little bit of a one here. And a bit of a one here as well. Okay, so we're going to come back in with our really dark shades like we did the last time, which was our blue and our brown, which was our yellow, oh, sorry, our burnt, sienna, burnt umber and our ultramarine. That's my kind of go-to dark shade. If I want to go really, really dark, I'd maybe get a Payne's Grey. I don't actually have any Payne's Grey at the moment, so I don't really like using black um, unless I have to really use it. And then I will. But okay, so I'm going to go quite dark under here. So I'm just going to just zoom in here a bit so I can see what I'm at. So getting some of these dark places in here. And it's quite dark at the base. And places a big dark one underneath here, actually. Yeah, there is. And dark again in here. So, and then we're going to come back in again like I did the last time, which had a bit of our um, burnt sienna, which is a sort of a reddishy brown mixed with a bit of our burnt umber. Often they get mixed up with those two. But uh, the burnt sienna is a much more of a reddishy hue through the brown. But it's great for autumn. Brilliant, brilliant color for autumn. If you're doing autumn, if you're doing anything with an autumn color um, bent on it, uh, always I always get, get, get a bit of, bit of burnt sienna there. It's brilliant. Now, I know it's not autumn, but we still have a lot of the autumny shades on these walls because there's lots of old um, dead leaves basically there now at this stage still from from autumn time. So that's over here in the corner here. So I'm just looking here. With the, oh, yeah. OK. Now I'm just kind of building out these these areas of dark and light. Because you want to get some really nice dark parts as against the light parts. So there's a really dark bit in here. And as you can see, I'm not getting the overall. I'm not trying to actually individualize as where every single rock and every single little bit. That would, um, that's not what I'm going for in this. I'm trying to go for the overall atmosphere. I'm going to put a bit more yellow out for this. Um, to get the capture, capture the light, capture the shade, capture the feeling that that I kind of get down there, and that's really what, to me, I think that's what. If you get that in a picture, I think you're 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 you can be happy. I think now I'm going to put some of the light in here. Some of these, there's really light bits of mossy kind of stuff here. So I'm going to add bits of yellow, and again, I'm putting my holding my brush really far back, tipping it along. And there's a nice flat kind of rock here, which I really like. And it's just capturing the sun really well here. So I'm just going to stick that in there like that. So I hope uh, it's great to see somebody looking over from um, from Canada there. Um, it's a place I've never been, and it's a place I imagine. I've always had this thing. I'd love to see it. I don't. I just. I don't know. I just think it's a. I imagine it's just a beautiful country, um, the forests, the hit mountains, and you know rivers and and the, the climb. Uh, you know, just that. You know, you've got the cold winters and you've a warmer summer. You know, you've just got it, and then it's just so um dramatic. I think as well the landscape. I'd love. To, it's a place I always sort of thought I'd love to see. So um, yeah, I think it's it's, it's a lovely spot. Maybe someday when all of this is over and I'll get a chance to travel. Now, I'm just going to bring a little bit down here. Now, I'm going to bring some dark areas. I'm just messing with the dark areas here at the minute. There's quite a lot of mishmash, what I call various mishmashy areas, where there's lots of bitsy things going on. There's nothing really definite at all. What would you say? Bits of leaves, bits of sticks, bits of twigs, bits of leftovers from last year's whatever 
uh, the autumn last year where you know the leaves fell and so I'm just going to get some of this here color in here and I want to get a little sort of a grayish shade so a bit of going down through this rocky feeling here I'm just barely tipping it again we're going into this what I call this whisper thing here so we're just going to get very light just very lightly just Tip, tip, tip. It's a dry brush, almost dry, but it's almost like you're using up dirty, dirty paint on the brush, you know, the old paint that you have on the brush already. And then we just do the same with this side here. Just get. I say, if you have any questions, I don't think I might see them on the this live stream because I just, the way it is, I can't. I see the first few comments and then I don't see anything else. And I've noticed that before. Um, if you have any, that is, um, if you don't, that's fine. But if you do, um, please, please let, let me know because um, is there anything you'd like to ask me about it or if you have any queries? Um, yeah, and I know somebody had colors was limited in the colors, but maybe I could be able to help as regards what you could, alternate colors you could use. Um, because I've been doing some pages recently that have had very few colors in them because I've was running out of paint and then I got some new paints there recently so that was great so I'm adding a slightly bluier color to the paint this time to the green so I'm mixing a bit of blue in with my sap green and I'm adding a little bit of white into it just for there's a few little lighter leaves that have kind of got a slightly bluer hue to them how's the time going there oh it's okay it's not too bad not too bad for time hope to get this done by half past that's the idea so I'm tapping a few little leaves in and out through here, which are slightly lighter in shade. I'm going to go back to my mossy colors again, which is my greens and a bit of yellow. And a little bit of yellow ochre, which just gives it that kind of, I'd say it's a great calming color, yellow ochre for um, greenery. I'm going to put a bit up here as well, because it's kind of a... A bit on the back wall, as it were. A little bit of a little more. So there's a little bit of the greenery down through here. This is a little more green with not too much colour in it, just the green. And a few bits coming down onto the ground here as well. Now I'm going to work back again a little bit more on my greenery on my bot on the floor of the, the area. So I'm going to add a little more, I'm going to get a little smaller brush this time. And I'm just going to tap it along with a little bit of our mixed mash colour that we had before, which is a bit of our burnt siennas, a bit of yellow ochre. Little bits of green, little bits of brown, little bits of God knows what, basically. And we're going to just tap this in and out through here. So make sure there's no shadowy areas. Yeah, there is a bit. Even bits of blue in it, which might seem weird, but it gives it a depth to it, too. As I say, this is a really sort of special part of the garden that we always feel because it's really, maybe you can feel the ancientness of it, if that is a word, the ancientness, but it's, um, you can feel it kind of coming through that the, the old wall. I often wonder who built these stone walls. Like it's they're literally covered in moss in this area. Further up now along here, they're not, but um, these, still there's layers of it going down. It's just I'm just popping backwards and forwards here a little bit on this too. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. You often wonder who were the people who actually built it. You know, it's a couple of hundred years old anyway, a few hundred years old, I'd say. Um. And this area is covered in ancient monuments, like from so many fields around are just, you know, you, you look in and you see these strange shapes and you see these strange um, like bumps and you'll often see hawthorn growing on them. And it's a sure sign that this, it, it, it's an ancient dwelling place or, and I mean ancient, back a few thousand years old. And the cairn on the hill, for example, is, say, is 5,000 years old, over 5,000 years old, older than the pyramids. And it, um, I'm using say different mishmash colors here, bits of yellow, um, 
bits of yellow ochre, bits of um, browns, the two browns, burnt sienna, burnt umber, bits of blue, even yellow, uh, burnt or some ultramarine, um, all different shades going through it here, even Naples yellow. So it's really kind of, you're just, you know, you can just play around this part, which is great. Now, it just gives it that leafy kind of feel to it. So yeah, it's a really, it's a place of really ancient history, and um, I say you can really, you can really feel it in the area sometimes when you're driving, when you're going around. Um, I just love looking into the fields and asking, what's under that? I wonder what's who's here, who lived there, and what people's made this. And then let's say the fairy tree, the whole, the whole feeling of the fairy um, culture, which is kind of going nowadays, but still people are wary. They still won't cut down that fairy tree just in case. You know, they just. Just not going to chance it, you know. It's okay. So there we go. I'm going to just do a bit more here. Now I just want to check back here. Now let me see. So my phone just went off here. Just bear with me for a minute. Okay, so we've got another piece of a tree sticking out the side here. Where's my other brush gone? This one. I have a few brushes, different sizes here. So I'm just kind of going from one to the other here a little bit. And it's a bit of a we see a bit dark one. That. And I've just used the brown and the blue here, ultramarine, and a bit of my um, burnt umber. Just dot on my tree here. Just going to make my little tiny brush too. My little baby brush. Oh yes, there's a, there's one here on the wall I wanted to do. That's what I wanted to do. There's one coming up here. And these are all part of the old, old, um, but just before I do that, I want to put a bit of moss on my on my stone, my back stone there. And I'm putting a bit of yellow and my green and a little bit of yellow ochre for the moss. And I'm just going to put a little bit on that stone. And because it's in the background, I might even put a bit of brown in it to give it a little bit of a depth into it, a little bit of darkness into it because it's just shadowed a little more. So it's green and yellow and yellow ochre and brown. So I'm just going to shove it down on top of these. So I'm going to actually add a little darkness into that. So I'm going to add a little bit of the blue-brown into that, which is my ultramarine as well into it, because I want to get a tone darker on that wall there in place. It's just a tone darker, see? Because it gives it that nice shadowed feel there. Because there's lots of moss. There's a nice bright, flower, bright, 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 um, Greeneries here too as well, so I might put them in as well. Okay, so a nice bit of yellow to tip it along, just to give it that, like as if the sun is just tipping along on top. Okay, like that. Just, it's just catching the rays of the sun coming in between the trees, basically. Like that. And there's a nice lot of light green trees here. So I'm going to try a different kind of shade. I'm going to put a bit more of a green just with white through it rather than putting the yellow through it. So I'm kind of green and white. And we might put a bit of yellow, but we may not. And there's a few of these little leaves here. And they're kind of like a different kind of a brush, a bush even. I'm going to put a little bit, yes. Yeah, so. A few little leaves like that. It's a different type of little bush there. So just going to put a few little light bits like that through it. I put a few darker bits underneath it then as well. So just a pure green on its own this time. Just tipping in and out through it. And get it up on the brush would be handy. Sometimes that happens. It just doesn't catch it. Just a few little bits there.
Now, I'm going to get this other bit of the, this fairy tree. This is part of the old, to say the old fairy tree. So again, I'm going in with my dark color, my blue and my um, brown. And I'm going to bring it up and just go off the page. Let's have a look here. And it kind of comes up and around here like this. It really is like it's all so old this part of the tree it's just like bits of it left and if you you know you're trying not to break it when you go down but if you go down and tip it at all it, it cracks but there's new branches forming over to the right hand side so which is really nice to see it's got new life in it and this kind of goes around this brush like this and how I'm going to make that stand out is I'm going to put a bit of a light color going down the side of it like this instead, okay? A little bit of light down the left-hand side of it. And a little bit of white into it there. Go back to my dark shade again. Now, what I want to do now is, uh, there's a lovely horse chestnut, actually, that is in just in that corner. And I'm just going to add a couple of the leaves of it, and they're going to come down. This is going to be interesting because it's a little bit wet at this time, but we'll see how we get on. So I'm going to add a bit of, it's a really bright, bright shade. So I'm going to add my yellow, my green, and my white together. I'm going to get a bit more green into it. And I want to get really light, kind of a color here. And I'm going to add this color here. I'm going to put, put it across the page in like this because you can see the leaf of it coming right down into the picture. And quite this is kind of interesting because it's going to be. We'll go quite heavy here. I bring this around so I can see it a bit better. Can't really see it here better too well. We have another one over here. We can just see where I'm going with this one. Okay, this one here as well. So just about. Now, I'm going to work on them for a minute now. So, we've got, let's see here, I've got my little brush here. Whoops, go back up with the, to this one here. Now, there's a line going to, I might try this down a peg now because I'm kind of reaching for this a bit too high now. To find, if I can manage this one off the table. I really have to clear this table sooner or later because it's going to, it's getting a bit madder by the day. Okay, so, we've got yellow. I'm going to put more yellow out. I'm going to get my yellow and a bit of white into that. And a teeny bit of green. And I'm actually going to add a little tiny bit of the powder blue into it this time. The powder blue. So it's the yellow. And I'm just going to build it back here. I'm working back. And actually, I'm going to cheat a bit too here in this in a minute. That makes sense. 
And I'll show you what I mean by cheating. I want these to stand out a bit. So those trees in the background, okay? I'm going to get them a little, put a tiny tone slightly different on them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little mix of a watery mix of a little bit of, let me see, a bit of my burnt sienna, and a bit of yellow ochre, and it's very, very like a wash. Now I mean a wash. I'm going to barely tip on top of this. This should be done flatter now. I'm just going to put them in this angle so, um, because it's very watery. But I'm going to just put them in here like this. And it's just kind of a little glow coming through the background. I say burnt sienna is a lovely shade. It kind of really is, gives it a lovely... Actually, just one thing I want to do here. You see this part here? If you can see this has gone right up against the edge of the tree, and I'm going to change that slightly. And I'll tell you why, because I don't I want the background to I want the tree in the background to come through here. Because when I do that, it'll send. See the difference that makes? I don't know if you can see it. I'll show you. I'll show you. Let me go close up here. If you can see that little, this little gap, this little bit here, by putting the bit of green in there in between the tree, and I don't have to put a bit of light on it now yet, but and a little bit of the burnt sienna, but by doing that, it gives it a depth. Like that. Don't worry. I'm going. Don't worry. I'll tip on top of the hawthorn for now, and even top of the the tree for now. See now, now it pushes the tree into the background. It brings the hawthorn into the foreground when you do that. So I'm going to come back down to my leaves. I'll just I'll do that in a second. Come back to the rest of it now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come back here with my and I can just undo my. Where are we going here? One, two. I've just turned, look at my picture on the on the screen. Unfortunately, now I'm going to get a bit of shadow on these leaves. I'm going to get my green in here. I'll get my green in here again. I'm going to come back in with a bit of white on these. I'm edging a little bit of white along the very tip, 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 tip. Take that off. Flick it back in. Send this one here. I'm just get the very edge of it here, a bit of white. Turn, I say I tip it along. I let it just actually just I turn the brush as I do it, so I get an edge like that. You turn the brush in your hand actually as you do it, and you can flick them back into the greenery. Down a bit more with this white. So I have to keep looking at my phone here. So, as I say, I try to capture this whole 
the feeling of the place and that's what I try to get now in this is really capture the feeling of what it is that kind of makes this place special and it's that kind of it's that I suppose it's just being under the tree it's by the wall the ancient wall um, it makes it feel like a really peaceful little little spot we can just tune out for a while this is the birds if you do a video down there one of the days so let's put it up on that page because it's just a bird song now i'm going to come back in with a bit of the greener here darken this actually put it smaller where's my little brush gone where's he gone now with a little fella here somewhere i'm after putting him somewhere else where i put him he's gone for a walk where's he gone maybe put it down here sorry don't mind me oh here's another little one here's one here's a little fella i don't just go for a walk when you're trying to when you're trying to use them so i'm going to get me green i don't want to put a little bit of the blue in that actually and I'm just going to get it along this edge here, like this. So I might use a little bit of mauve into it, actually. A little bit of blue, or brown, green, and a bit of the mauve shade. And a line like that, okay? Now, like that. And I'm going to flick that. back back into the you just get my I'm sorry my phone keeps going off here it's not easy doing it off the phone I'd need another laptop to do it from but um don't have it available at the moment I'm going to bring down the where the stem of the, 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 the leaf is in here that's the same shade here the dark so I'm going to bring a little bit of that some of the little veins going through Jack that corner there. Yeah, so I just got to bring these across little veins up, across in here like that. So as I say, remember when you're doing it, always go forwards and backwards from the. Don't mind if I go off into another world here painting because sometimes I just um, really forget you're there, and I'm not really. I'm actually just I'm just getting to concentrate a bit for a while, and then I'll come back and. Um, uh, have a little chat as well. So I've got a bit, a bit more of the yellowy green, yellow, green, and white here along here. So along in here, like that. I'll put a little bit in between these as well. Look, say so in there, like that. Keep this on the go because this keeps going off of me, which is a bit annoying. And we're going to come back to that darker one now again, our bluey, our purpley green colour that we had. And I'm just going to put a little bit of it. Oh, too heavy there. I say, hopefully, you said you can always check back on these on um, YouTube and try. Um, on, on, on on Facebook as well. So yeah, so just gonna get a little one two here.
tricky one here at that. Click here. And click here at that. Won't put too much detail on that one up there. And the same in here. We're going to go down with this one. So hopefully, as I say, um, give it a go. Um, so I just look at my phone here for a second just to get the... Uh -huh, here we go. And this one's in shadow more here. So we're going to get a shadow in here. And like you don't really see a darker, like a darker green area here. I can add a little bit of the, the brown to this just to give it the little veins going through it. With the darker shades just down here like that. So as I say, really it's a case of just really coming backwards and forwards. You work from light areas to dark areas, work backwards again. Um, and we have a little light bit here at the corner. Onto our last little bit of a leaf here now. So it's a bit of yellow, and you're talking about our yellow, greens, and whites here. Little bit of extra types on it. Now, just going to get oops, it's a bit more dark here. The dark being the yellow, uh, or sorry, the green and the, the purple heat shade here. I'm just going to dark, put a little bit of less, more less shadow there. Let's get the impression of the leaf coming out on top here. Move it there. And I'm going to put a little dark patch underneath here actually because I want to make this stand out a bit more. So you can sort of play around with the background and so sort of afterwards you can go backwards and forwards, which is really handy. Because nothing, as I say, is ever set in stone until you're, you know, as I say, until, until you're finished, then you're finished, if you know what I mean. Until then, just don't ever worry about it. Just kind of keep going. Keep working on it. Now, I just want to get this, just this, pull this back a bit. It's too white. It's up there. A little bit more of the yellow on it, up the corner. And then I think we're more or less done with one of the little bits I want to do. Yes, which is I want to put a little bit of light on the corner of these this here. We'll put a bit of light there. And we're just going to smudge that, smudge that down a bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up on Facebook afterwards and you can see what because it's, it's very hard to see it i know on the camera at times you know what i mean in the sense you can see it but it's not you'll really see it properly i don't think i'm just putting a little bit smudges of light so that's really oh yes we want to do we want to go back over our tree here that's right because this tree we had gone in a bit on the background i want to put this good and strong and dark again that's it there I'm going to put tiny bits of light coming down there, just that side there. 
little bits of the whitey color, whitey gray color. Just little bits. I don't want to make it too too lumpy here. Just little flickers of light that is capturing the evening evening sun. And we can smudge them in with a dry brush then as well. A tiny bit of light there. I always remember the lights, which side the light's coming from. It's always very important to remember. I was thinking, where, where is the sun in the sky when you're doing this? Because that kind of makes it quite relevant as to where you're going to see the light. Okay, and I'll just last little few little bits. I'm just going to add little bits of tips of light along the tops of these, top of the wall here in places, where there's little bits of the sunlight coming through onto the onto the um, onto our mossy kind of wall, and it's just going to highlight little bits of it there in places. And it, gives, it almost looks yellowy in the sun. So it gives little tips of it coming through. Yeah, and that's it. Our fairy tree, I'll just put it back up now where you can see it. Um, that's our fairy tree under the fairy tree. A uh, slightly different view than the last time because we're a little bit further back from it, but this will be all sort of wild kind of um tree is basically our fairy tree which is now kind of rather old to say the least but there's new life of it coming over to the left hand side which you just can't quite see in this picture which is but you can't quite get under there really too easily so uh, i hope you enjoyed it and i hope maybe you might have picked up a few tips along the way and if you have any questions please please let me know i'd be more than to uh, answer them and um yeah, please. Uh, I'll, I'll do another one the next next week. I'm not sure what day. Would it be Monday or Tuesday, Mon Sunday or Monday? Not sure yet. I couldn't do tomorrow. I usually do Monday night, Monday, but it'll be um, Sunday or Monday. Um, and any suggestions you'd like me to paint? I'm quite happy, as I always ask the kids' class. Um, I'll have a kids', kids class tomorrow morning now instead of a, a Monday, instead of a Tuesday this week. And then again on a Friday instead of a Thursday. But I'll put that up. Okay, listen, thanks so much. and. Uh, great to see you and uh, hopefully um, you yeah, pick up some tips and thanks a million. Bye bye.